The King's Academy is honored tonight to be able to have with us Congressman Brian Mast as our 2017 commencement speaker. Congressman Mast is currently in his first term representing the 18th District of Florida. Prior to his election to Congress, Brian followed in his father's footsteps by serving in the U.S. Army for more than 12 years. It was during his faithful service that he earned medals that included the Bronze Star Medal, the Army Commendation Medal for Valor, the Purple Heart Medal, and the Defense Meritorious Service Medal. While deployed in Afghanistan, he worked as a bomb disposal expert under the Elite Joint Special Operations Command. The last improvised explosive device that he found resulted in catastrophic injuries, which include the loss of both of his legs. While lying in bed recovering at Walter Reed Medical Center, Brian's father gave him advice that stuck with him to this very day. To ensure the greatest service he gave to his country, and to the best example that he could set for his children that it still lay ahead for him. Brian took that advice to heart and he dedicated himself to a new venture and that would be to serve his country and his community as a congressman. Brian remained active on active duty following his injuries and provided expertise to the National Nuclear Security Administration and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms during his recovery process. After his retirement from the Army, he continued working in counterterrorism and national defense as an explosive specialist with the Department of Homeland Security. Brian subsequently received a degree from Harvard Extension School and volunteered to serve alongside Israel's defense forces to show support for the freedom Israel represents throughout the Middle East and the world. In Congress, Brian strives to serve as he did on the battlefield without regard for his personal gain or personal sacrifice. He is a member of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee, where his priorities include addressing the pressures of all that has happened with Lake Okeechobee and the Foreign Affairs Committee, where he uses his military expertise to help strengthen the safety and security of the United States. Brian currently lives in Palm City with his wife, Brianna, and their three children. So would you join with me this evening as we give a TK welcome to Congressman Brian Mast. out of the way first. Uh, number one, one of the hardest things to do when you speak and you have a cane is to find a place to hold it. Um, Maybe. Am I holding on to it? Uh, you know, I got a, I'll tell you this real quick. This wasn't part of my prepared remarks. I got a lot of compliments on my tie tonight. It's a King's Academy tie. And Right after I was asked to come here and speak, I received this in the mail literally two or three days later. So I just assumed that everybody was going to be in a King's Academy tie. I thought that was, <laughs> that was what I had to wear. <laughs> Still a good tie. I would have worn it anyway. Um, and, and the other thing you know, we were talking about before the uh, graduates came in here, we were standing up here and uh, all of the teachers were on there and, and they were sitting over here. And uh, I remarked, and I said, why are all the students sitting over here? So you actually look really, really young from, from up here, so, so good on you for that. I uh, want to congratulate you as the, the faculty for looking very youthful. <laughs> you know, I, as I sit here and uh, I got to enjoy the ceremony and, and hear the, the choir and the band and, uh, you know, hear the solos and the speeches, I've been just absolutely in awe. Uh, by what you've shown that, that each one of you can accomplish. And as I sit here and uh, think about the things that I could tell you, I can't tell you what college to go to, and I can't tell you what career to pursue or what branch of the military to join that will bring you success. All I can really maybe hope to do is uh, to speak a little bit about how to be successful in whatever it is that you do endeavor to go out there and do 
how it is that you go out there and accomplish whatever it is that you want to accomplish in life, and how you do that through the trials that you face as you endeavor to, to throw your caps in the air and move on out these doors into an entirely new world. There's no question for me of the biggest trial that I ever faced. For me, the moment that changed my life forever was a moment that ultimately made me the strongest that I could ever be in my life, but it was a moment that first destroyed me and broke me down into the weakest that I could ever be in my life. It was a night where my assault force and I were moving quietly through the dark night of Kandahar, Afghanistan, and uh, our target was a very similar target to those that we would go after looking for each and every night. It was a high-value target in an area that was nothing but military-age male fighters. And our job was the same as so many nights. It was to go out there and to kill or capture our enemies. And as the lone bomb technician that was a part of that assault force that, uh, that I got the honor to be a part of so many nights, I was leading and clearing the way for our team, looking for any explosive devices or anything that might be buried on the route that we had to travel. And as we neared our target that we were looking for, we came to a, a deep river that had a steep embankment on the other side and a high wall on the top of that steep embankment. And we didn't have a real good ability to find our way over that. There was unfortunately only one place that we could find to get across that area and to actually get across that wall. And I told my guys that if I could figure out that was the only place that we could get across, that there had to be an explosive or, an, or an explosive device buried in that location. So I set out to look for just that. I had a laser that was on the front of my rifle, on the front of my carbine. And I would aim that laser out in front of me and I would look for trip wires. In that remote area of Afghanistan, I had lost a, a couple of brothers just a few missions prior to that. I still wear their name on my wrist. They had tripped a trip wire in that same area. Eventually, I got down on my hands and knees and I started to look for a device that might be buried in the ground. I started digging in the dirt and looking for that hazard that I knew that had to be there, but I couldn't find it. And as I stood up, I gave the signal to two of my closest friends, two snipers, DeLong and Foreman, that I was going to push ahead. And I started walking one, two, maybe three steps, and suddenly the loudest explosion that I had ever heard in my life and just occurred. It sounded like this crack of thunder that had gone off just next to my head. And it felt like what was an uppercut from some heavyweight boxer had just been delivered to the underside of my chin. It made the world go black, not because I was knocked out, but because of this huge cloud of, of dust and dirt, this plume that, that engulfed me that was blown up into the air. And whatever had just occurred, it had tumbled me through the air. And it had threw me about 10 feet and ultimately landed me on my back. And as I was lying there, I'm trying to catch my breath because the wind was knocked out of me. And the only thing that I could really compare it to was this time when I was about 10 years old and I fell about 20 feet out of a tree and the wind was knocked out of me in that kind of way. And, and I was trying to get up and figure out what had happened, but I couldn't stand. And I was trying to wipe all of that dirt and all of that dust out of my eyes, but I couldn't because all of my fingers on my hands were broken and my arm was very badly damaged. And right then, I heard the voice of one of my guys over my earpiece that I still had in my ear. And he was saying, EOD was hit. EOD is down, that was my call sign. And that was my life, September 19th, 2010. And I'm gonna tell you right now, you're all going to have moments in your life where you get hit, where you get knocked down, where there's something that happens with your family or with your friends that you see them come and go, where maybe you have to go through something physical where it might seem impossible to get back up. That moment, that most difficult moment that you ever have to face in your life is going to be the most important moment that you ever have to go through in your life. 
It will be when you show exactly what it is that you know, and when you show exactly what it is that each and every one of you are made out of, and become that much stronger because of those moments that you go through. About a week later after that, I found myself in Washington, D.C., lying in a hospital bed with a very, very new normal to life, and some major soul-seeking that needed to happen, and that soul-seeking was not easy. But it happened for me in two very distinct ways. One of them was mentioned, the words that came from my father, and my father always had a great number of, of incredible things to say to me. My father, he came to my bedside, and he gave me the most important lesson that he ever could have given me at the most difficult time that it could have been for him to possibly give me guidance. My dad and I, we loved each other very much, but we've never been those two guys that found it easy to go out there and say that we loved each other. But when he came to my bedside for that first moment, he told me, Brian, I love you. I'm glad you're all right. I'm glad you're okay, son. And after that, it returned to tough love. And he said, Brian, you cannot let this keep you down. You have to find a way to pull yourself up, to get out there, to get back to work. He told me I couldn't let my kids see me sitting on my butt, regardless of what happened to me in life, because my kids would think that it would be an okay way for them to go through their life. My dad knew that I had to find my purpose again in my life. The second place that I endeavored to do a little bit of soul seeking happened for me with the help of the endless numbers of pastors, chaplains, reverends, preachers, and every other person of faith that stopped by my bedside. They all reminded me each time they stopped there that I was made in the image of a perfect God that does not make mistakes a God that never ever quit, a God that has always achieved perfection. And what they helped a guy looking for a miracle to realize was that the Lord wants to work through each and every one of us, but he's not gonna go out there and do every bit of the work for us. They helped me to realize that I could let what now I have faced, I couldn't let it destroy me. I couldn't let it define me. I had to find to use it, find a way to use it as, as a tool that would make me the strongest that I could ever be in my life. So now I had two fathers that were out there telling me to get back to work. And getting to work is exactly what I want to talk to each and every one of you about this evening. Because you're about to go out there and accomplish every single dream that you've ever had inside of you if that's what you choose to go out there and do. I want to tell you this. Learn well to dust yourself off. You have a foundation in scripture and a foundation in this nation that's giving you an example from the very beginning on how to overcome challenges. Realize that dusting yourself off is what we do and then move forward stronger and tougher than ever. That's what life is all about. Realize that whatever tragedy, whatever difficulty, whatever challenge it is that you face in your life, that you will choose to either curl up into a corner and quit, or as you said, you will take that challenge and you will own it, and you will look it in the eye, and you will give it a big size 10 in the backside, and you will become that much stronger because of it. Own that adversity and make it something that makes you stronger. Understand that you are not made of glass. If you fall down, you are not going to break. But even if you're not 100%, what separates each and every one of you is the ability to go out there and still give 100% in whatever it is that you're out there doing. Finding an excuse to not get the job done or to quit is the easiest thing that you could ever go out there and look for in life. You'll find one around every single turn. But finding an excuse to succeed, no matter what life throws at each and every one of you, that's what will make the difference in each of you. Know that you will have many choices and many demands for your time. But if you choose to serve something that is more important than yourself as an individual, then you will never have any regrets in whatever it is that you do. I have zero regrets about the injuries that I have sustained because they occurred while serving my country and serving my brothers to my left and right in combat. And there's not one day that I would give two legs and a finger for the life of any one of my friends. I have no regrets because I spent my life, I spent my life serving the most worthy causes that I could find. God, country, and family.
in that service to country, I learned well both as a bomb technician, in combat, in many places around the world, and what is, an effect, what is affectionately now called a, a wounded warrior, and now as a member of Congress, that what each of us witnesses in life, it is contagious. A leader who displays courage, valor, selflessness will absolutely draw the same thing out of those that they lead. And likewise, one who displays fear or no bearing will pull the same out of those that they surround. You will be contagious in one way or another. So realize that it is a responsibility to be the most positive inspiration that each and every one of you can be. Never forget that life is not about how many minutes that you can eke out of it, because that's something that you're never ever going to know. It's about what you do with the minutes that you know you have. Do not fear death. And I don't say that to you to be macho. You should not fear anything in your life more than wasting one second of your life. That's what you need to fear more than anything because you only get one life and it's up to you to go out there and do the absolute best that you can with every single second that you're given. Never cease to grow as a person. Never cease to improve. And if you did the best possible work that you could do at King's Academy during your years here, then don't simply survive off of your accomplishments of your past. Do not be satisfied with whatever your laurels are today. Find the hunger to continue leading and being the same person that you filled these walls in. If your work in here was not the best that you ever could have done, then understand that this is your new beginning. You can move forward today, redefine your direction, redefine your strategy, redefine your purpose and your contribution to this world. Resist the temptation to point your fingers at the system and say that any person or any situation, it's, that, it's the fault of that situation that caused you to not succeed. The truth is, there is no better system anywhere in this world to find your own pathway to success. You are given the chance, you're given the opportunity, it's up to you to go out there and not squander any of this opportunity that is given to each and every one of you. Realize, that we all have periods in our life, we all have events that we do not anticipate. They're gonna cause us pain, they're gonna cause us agony, but it's pushing through that pain that will make you stronger than you've ever been. I ask people sometimes, how is it that you temper steel? How is it that you make steel or metal strong? And the answer is, is that you have to put it through the fire. And when you're thrown into the fire and you come out on the other side, you're gonna be stronger too. I'm better for the pain that I've gone through, that I had to work through. I'm stronger because I've been knocked down on my back and because I didn't just lay there and cry and just think about it, but I found a way to get back up. And I had to harness every bit of my will to do so, but in return, it showed me the capability that I have and that every other person out there has if you're going to have the willingness to go out there and harness it. Not only did that pain show me what it was that I could accomplish, but it reminded me that my time to accomplish something on this earth is limited. So don't stop and rest because you're tired or exhausted. Stop and rest when the job is done, when the mission is accomplished. And after you've stopped and rest briefly, after you've regained your breath, don't just sit back and boast of the past. Go out there and find the next great thing to exhaust yourself in fully again. And while you're doing all of this, never forget to do it with a smile on your face. Take your work serious, but never take yourself so seriously that you cannot laugh at the situation which surrounds you wherever you are in life. I promise you, we had plenty of moments of laughs in situations that were dangerous and even in moments that were deadly. People ask me often, what is it like to move forward in life with a disability that I didn't know before? And the truth is this, I've found that there are only two disabilities that exist in life. And they existed for me long before I ever lost two legs. Number one is, do you have the courage to go out there and try something even though you may fail? Do you have the courage to step out there on a limb? And number two is this, 
Do you have the will and the determination and the intestinal fortitude to make certain that you don't fail at whatever it is that you have the courage to go out there and try? Class of 2017, don't let anybody else in this world dictate how great that you can be. Don't let anybody out there limit how exceptional you can be. Set the bar as high as you possibly can every single time you go out there and set the bar. Whatever your path is from here, onto university, onto some trade school, off to play sports, into a career in the military, driving a truck, working on cars, building homes, teaching others, saving lives. I could say nothing more honorable about any one of you than to say that you went out there and you worked your fingers to the bone. So do that. Class of 2017, I wanna say congratulations to each and every one of you. You earned today. This is what you earned with your many years of hard work. You earned this moment. So I wanna say may God bless each and every one of you. May he bless every single step of yours going forward. And certainly may he bless this great country, which you will now be a part of defending. Thank you for letting us know.